Tonight, heartless thieves target a place so close to the hearts of many in the Wyala community and how the region is set to benefit from this year's federal budget. This is Southern Cross News with Fraser Goldsworthy. Good evening. Heartless thieves have targeted Wyala's Road Safety Centre, leaving organisers devastated. It's appealing for the return of the stolen road signs, saying the money used to replace them will come at a huge cost to the volunteers. It's tasked with helping prepare our kids to use local roads safely. And for over 40 years, the Wyala Road Safety Centre has been just doing that. However, it's now picking up the pieces after being targeted by thieves about two weeks ago. We noticed that seven of our uh, signs that we got here on the track were missing and every, every one of those signs are different. They included a stop sign, rail crossing signs, along with give way and roundabout signs. It's left the organisation and its volunteers disappointed. When you're trying to teach children to use the road safely, you need those signs to be able to guide them. It's also a costly exercise replacing them. Each new one will cost around $70, with many modified for use on the tracks. It means other projects will now have to be sidelined in order to pay for them. We've got to spend that money to replace it rather than put it into upkeep and, and improvements in the centre. Mr Smith is calling on the thieves to return them, saying the kids who use the centre deserve the best training possible feel guilty, return the signs um, and perhaps even do some community work just to find out what it's like. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. State-of-the-art technology is being rolled out at hospitals across the mid-north in a bid to boost emergency treatments. It follows a successful trial in other regional facilities and allows for face-to-face -face consultation with medicos from across the state. Our regional medical centres often do it tough and now a bit of saving grace from the SAVE system. The virtual emergency service allows for real-time consults with doctors, allowing on-call regional GPs to rest overnight if the situation isn't critical. The SAVE's equipment is high, high technology um, video cameras that have been installed into accident and emergency department predominantly uh, to assist the, the local GP for out-of-hours non-urgent consultations. The state-of-the-art technology has the ability to zoom right into tiny skin blemishes to help doctors on the other end of the line provide a diagnosis. Concerned about a rash, the, the cameras have the ability to, to hone right in on that a little spot on somebody's skin and even right into an eye. It's already helped staff at Bullaroon District Hospital in its first two weeks. We had a burns patient presenting here the other day and we had our doctor as well but it's always nice to have the specialists available to give us advice as well so we dialed into the burns unit at the new RA. We to dial into saves and um, the presentation was um, assessed by the saves doctor and uh, treated and the patient was happy and um, it worked very well, I thought. In my first year, it gives me a lot of yeah, reassurance that I have someone close by in Adelaide that can help me out. Doctors and nurses from surrounding hospitals such as Oruru and Laura have the ability to dial into Bullaroo Saves Unit for extra assistance and support. The technology will also be installed at hospitals in Burra, Peterborough and Snowtown. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. The final budget before the next federal election has been unveiled with tax cuts and getting to surplus the key pillars. For our region, local federal MP Rowan Ramsey says there's a number of good funding outcomes in infrastructure, health and aged care. With an election around the corner, Treasurer Scott Morrison's third budget is talking up the nation's economic future. Low and middle income earners are the big winners, set for a tax cut of up to $500 a year. $140 billion for individuals, about 60, a bit over $60 billion for the businesses. Wireless Chamber of Commerce says local businesses will be hoping some of those savings flow their way. That money filtered down through uh, the purchase of goods and services. However, the opposite side of the coin says that 
families may pay, play catch up. Locally, there was little more specific funding for Grey, on top of the duplication of Port Augusta's Joy Baluk Bridge announced on Monday. But Mr Ramsey has talked up some programs, including the $200 million third round of the Building Better Regions Fund. I know I've got lots of good projects around uh, that will be wanting to pitch into that space. Uh, and very hopeful that we could land at least some of them. There's also up to $144 million available for regional aged care providers to keep them going. Providing some sustenance to the bottom line for those facilities that are um, on, on the borderline or, or losing money. And a half a billion dollars has been set aside to tackle the doctor and nurse shortage in regional areas. It'll look to offer more placements in regional areas to encourage new doctors to go rural. As Streaky Bay desperately seeks doctors, the government says it's a much-needed program to lure medical staff into regional practice. These are the kind of assistance we can give uh, for people to have this great medical experience and an opportunity for life in the country. So. John Hunt, Southern Cross News. The Greens have accused the Federal Labor Party of betraying the health of the Murray-Darling Basin. It comes after Labor agreed to support the government's move to reduce environmental water in both the northern and southern basins. It's a major betrayal that has the Greens reeling. It's devastating that Federal Labor has decided to do a deal with the coalition government. Big businesses are deciding what policies governments in implement. The deal will see proposed amendments to the Basin Plan receive support in the Senate. They include a substitution of water efficiency projects instead of buying back water. It means over 600 billion litres of water will be given to cotton farmers, but in return the government has agreed to start recovering an extra 450 billion litres of environmental water. A nice way, we're not really uh, not returning it, we're just returning it in a way that irrigators and big businesses can keep their water uh, and make money out of it. But tell everyone in the in Australia that we are saving water. So this will have a big impact on the lower darling. It'll have a big impact on water users in that part of the system. Uh, and those people are crying out for more water, not less. Labor says as part of the deal, it has important concessions from the feds that would guarantee better water compliance on the rivers. But the Greens say it's not good enough. The enforcement, that shouldn't be are uh, happening because more water is being stripped out of the environment. It should be happening anyway. The Northern Basin is able to keep 600 gigalitres of water and pretend that they're in returning water to the environment. New South Wales Shadow Water Minister Chris Minns was contacted for comment. Patrick Reinke, Southern Cross News. After the break, some very lucky primary school students spend the day at Golden North in Laura. That's next. The Pancala Trail upgrade set to get underway in Port Lincoln later this month has had a budget blowout. The cost of the long overdue overhaul has skyrocketed to more than a million dollars. A big ticket upgrade for Port Lincoln with a hefty price tag. We started off at about half a million dollars. That uh, to, blew out to about 700000 And then when we got the, the tenders, it uh, was over a million dollars. So we're looking for grant funding. But fortunately the project has come with major support from the wharfs, Flinders Ports. Safety is a big issue here. It was certainly a concern of Flinders Ports and that's why they're happy to uh, contribute it and partner with us just to formalise the trail through this area. So what will these upgrades include? Proper handrails, proper formalised crossing of the traffic areas, uh, a well delineated path so that people know exactly where they should be walking and uh, just make a safer um, access, safer surface. In the next couple of weeks we'll see some, uh, some movement on or some works uh, on what we call part 1B which is the section um, across the car park um, across the railway line and across to the True Bridge. The first stage of the upgrade will get underway later this month in the area behind me. The idea is to make the trail safer and more appealing for local pedestrians and tourists from visiting cruise ships. We need to make it safer and we need to make it a more a pleasant experience to take the trail from, uh, from what is the, the berth for the cruise ships to the city centre. Casey Trelaw. Southern Cross News. Well, it's every primary school kid's dream to spend the day inside an ice cream factory. And today, for Crystal Brook students, it came true. 
It's part of a joint venture between Golden North and schools across the Mid-North to see students create a brand new ice cream product. The dream of walking into an ice cream factory came true for many Year 6 and 7 students today. But they've got a pretty serious task, developing a brand new ice cream flavour. And it's certainly not a walk in the park. The best behind packaging, so capacity, uh, and then they'll also be looking at the technology side of things, so they'll be doing some 3D printing of different ice cream moulds. So mathematics is crucial, crucial in the ice cream industry with uh, recipe formulation and um, how we make our product and certainly the science with our laboratory side of things. They'll be using a range of different ingredients to get the taste buds of 5 to 15 year olds watering. So they'll look at how ice cream's made and we'll do lots of testing to see if they can use different products. Me and some boys were mucking around we had an idea about bacon ice cream. There were many excited faces today as they got a behind the scenes tour of Golden North's factory, learning about a few secret ingredients to make their special flavour a hit. Just getting to see it all in real life. Um, it really creates that authentic learning experience for them. It was excellent coming to the Golden North factory and yeah, I'm very excited to see if we can get one of our ideas into an ice cream. Other schools that will be involved in the project are Laura Primary, Gladstone Primary, Gladstone High and Borough Community School. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Well, you might have noticed them being heavily involved on Anzac Day, but the local army cadets offer more than just a day's work. The Port Augusta Club has around 25 members and is hoping to attract more to pull on the uniform. A team of soldiers move silently into the night, waiting for the next command from their officer. But being in the cadets isn't all about drill and discipline. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Um, a lot of things like being able to have um, the training here, sometimes, of course, sometimes it can be strict and disciplined, but all that um, comes into play when actually been given the opportunity. The public perception may be that these young cadets are aggressively peppered with orders, but it's quite the opposite. Cadets run cadets, so it's teenage instructors um, with the older staff members overseeing things to keep it safe. We're looking at growing um, anyone, one arm, one eye, one leg. The cadets find a way to make things happen and the magic is in them. And the training environment isn't male-centric either. As soon as you put this uniform on, you're not a female, you're not a male, you're a cadet. Christina came from, again, a very shy, you know, inwards-facing young lady to a very much focused on how can I help other, um, other people. While this program is a stepping stone for further involvement in the armed forces, organisers believe the program can be beneficial to any career path. Their background, who they want to go, nurses, doctors, lawyers, mechanics, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it's just making better Australians. That's what it's about. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. Coming up, why our region is a hotspot for animal-related car crashes. The details next. Marine-scale fishermen from the Eyre Peninsula are reaping the benefits from a new fish-sharing community platform. The pilot program will be open to consumers in the form of a smartphone app in the coming months. Connecting the fishermen directly to the consumer. That's the idea behind the Fairfish app, which will soon be available to customers to purchase catches directly from fishermen. We can tell a consumer that it was fisherman A who caught the fish. They caught it yesterday evening. They caught it using this method and in this location. And we even offer um, the stories and photographs of our fishes. The program will connect public consumers to plenty of seafood staples as well as some lesser known species. Species like whiting, garfish and snapper as being the really popular crowd favourites but it also incorporates things like skate and snook and tommy ruffs and nanagai. I chased nanagai a lot for fair fish um, and then a lot of some whiting and squid and things like that in the, when, when I get a chance to as well. Local fishers have been loving the pilot program concept. I'll catch my fish and the, by 24 hours later it's at a restaurant in Adelaide uh, ready to be served up that afternoon. So within 36 hours it's gone from the Air Peninsula to be served up in a pretty flash restaurant in Adelaide. 
the app, once available, will be open to consumers in Adelaide. However, there's a possibility the service could be available locally too. Well, the app's already completed, so we're waiting now until July 1, uh, which is when we, we hope to start our community-supported fishery officially and to the public. Casey Trelaw, Southern Cross News. A new report has found that drivers in the far north are some of the most likely to encounter an animal collision on our roads. It revealed Hawker has bumped off Port Augusta as the highest hotspot for an incident. If you're a driver in the Flinders Ranges, be extra wary. Wildlife lurking on the roads is likely to spoil your trip. Animal collisions continue to be a leading type of accident um, and this year we put a spotlight on the top five hotspots in South Australia. The study by Amy Insurance found that out of the 9,000 statewide insurance claims over the last 12 months, a large majority came from this area. Number one is Hawker, which has actually um, grown from fourth position, and Port Augusta, the former number, number one, has dropped to the second spot. The most common threat are kangaroos, while birds, emus and dogs pose a smaller risk. And as we head into the cooler months, now is the time we'll start to see a significant increase of these animals on our roads. The days are shorter, which means we're sharing the road for longer periods of time with animals as their peak travel times is dawn and dusk. Wildlife experts say that a shortage of water leads animals to search on our roads for something to survive. They can often lick the dew off of the, believe it or not, white painted lines on the road. They're reiterating the importance of concentrating while driving especially around the crucial dusk and dawn times. If you are travelling along um, one of these roads or one of these hotspot areas and you do see an animal, it's really important to slow down and brake, but avoid swerving so you don't endanger yourself and others on the road. Garth Burley, Southern Cross News. Time now for Fuel Watch. Here's Pat. Both unleaded and diesel prices are continuing to climb around the regions, so it's best to shop around to get the best bang for your buck. Starting with unleaded and Port Lincoln has gone up by a cent and it's the same for Port Augusta. Wyala has managed to stay put on a high 149 while Port Pirie has actually seen some green and dropped to 144. Kadena is also up by a cent or so and Broken Hill is now up to $1.48. Adelaide motorists are having a very bad time right now. The price is averaging a whopping $1.58. To diesel now and once again, Wyala has seen no change in its prices and stays on 146. The same as Port Piri, which has seen a two cent jump. Port Lincoln is now 145, Port Augusta is two cents more. Kadena has seen a little bit of movement and Broken Hill is getting very close to $1.50. Adelaide is also seeing red, but the price is still in the low 140s. Now remember, these prices are the regional averages and they do not reflect any one particular outlet. If you happen to find a spot that does sell unleaded or diesel for cheaper, let us know on our Facebook page. We'll stay with us after the break. Abby's here with all the local weather details and Abby, winter is on its way. Yes, it's time to pull out the winter warmers, Fraser, because we're in for some chilly temperatures over the coming days. I'll tell you why and when next. Welcome back. Well, it was a gorgeous mix of sunshine and cloud for most districts today. Temps reached the low 20s, while we saw some scattered showers in Port Lincoln and Port Pirie. And those isolated showers around the coastal areas are being produced by cloud in the south ahead of a cold front and onshore winds, and it's generally clear elsewhere under a high pressure system. On the waters for your Thursday, we'll see southwesterly winds up to 25 knots, seas at 2 metres, and sunrise is just before 7 a.m. And like I said, winter is coming as temperatures start to plummet from tomorrow. Partly cloudy and just 19 the top for Port Augusta, 18's the top for most of the coastal areas with some showers here and there. It'll be very cool in Clare tomorrow, just 13 the high. And Broken Hill is going to feel the brunt of this Antarctic blast hitting southeastern states, just 16 the top, so rug up. Looking ahead, it will remain quite mild over the coming days with quite a bit of cloud cover about and some patchy rain. 19 the top for Port Lincoln on Friday before it warms up slightly for the weekend with a possible light shower on both days. Cool and cloudy in Cleve tomorrow, just 16 the top and temps will remain in the mid to high teens over the weekend while Woodna should see some lovely pockets of sunshine.
It's a similar story here. Some light drizzle in Wyala and Kadena tomorrow. 18 the top, but it should clear by the weekend. But it's looking like pleasant conditions for Port Augusta. Partly cloudy most days as temps warm up into the low 20s by Sunday. While temps drop in Port Pirie tomorrow, just 17 the top with a shower here or there, but it will warm up slightly over the weekend. 21 the top for Sunday. Rug up and pack that brolly tomorrow if you're in Clare, just 13 the high. And it's going to be windy with a high chance of rain. And there won't be much relief from the cold snap in Broken Hill. Temps hovering around the chilly mid-teens. So Fraser, we're in for quite the cool change for the rest of the week. We certainly are. Thanks, Abby. And that's all from the newsroom for now. Thanks for your company. Good night.